Hello everyone. I am Dr. Ashish Jawarkar. I am assistant professor at Parul Institute of Medical Sciences and Research in the Department of Pathology. Today I'll be talking about a topic uh, cervical cancer screening. So uh, if we are all aware cancer is a disease with a very high morbidity and mortality and till date even though many new advances in treatments have come the best method is to prevent cancer. and when we talk about preventing cancer the one of the best methods is screening so what is screening screening is basically detecting cancer in patients who do not have the symptoms or any signs of the disease right uh, so if we are detecting cancer at such an early stage then it is very possible to treat the cancer completely or even prevent cancer from happening so if we come to uh, screening of the cervical cancer the cancer of the cervix is a very common disease it is a second most common uh, cancer in the world after breast cancer in india if we talk about uh, it 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 presents at a very la late stage and uh, the, there is considerable mortality from this uh, nearly 1/4 of the patients of cervical cancer die in india this in spite of the fact that uh, there is a very potent uh, screening method available which is we call as pap smear test uh this was developed in the early 20th century by george papanicolo it consists of a simple method of uh, taking scrape cytology from the cervical cells and putting it on a slide and then this is observed under the microscope based on the appearance of the cells we can tell in what stage they are whether they are malignant or not malignant whether they are pre malignant and on the basis of that the treatment guidelines are framed so uh, before we go to uh, what diagnostic uh, modalities are there we'll first uh, see how this cancer is caused the cervical cancer is typical in which it is now known that it is caused by a virus called as the human papilloma virus it has various strains out of that the most common ones which cause cancer are the hpv 16 and hpv 18 uh, the cervix itself is divided into two parts it's one is called as the exocervix and one is called as the endocervix and something is there in between which we call as the transformation zone this transformation zone is basically metaplasia there is squamous metaplasia of the endocervix and this particular transformation zone is uh, prone to get cancer this area is infected by the hpv 16 and 18 and uh, then it undergoes transformation to squamous cell carcinoma how would do we diagnose this how do we uh, take the pap smear Uh, a spatula is available and this spatula is scraped around the cervix after this the cells are taken or smeared onto a slide then this slide is fixed and stained with the pap stain newer method is available which we call as the liquid based cytology in liquid based cytology the collection method is almost similar in place of a spatula we use a brush and then this material is taken into a preservative contained a preservative in a container and uh, this is then used by a machine and it prepares new slides whatever is the method at the end of it the pathologist sees cells so based on the appearance of the cell based on the appearance of the nucleus of the cell and the cytoplasm of the cell we can tell whether it's a malignant cell or whether it's a benign cell so if you can see the slide over here on the top left is the normal cell adjacent to that is what we call as the low grade squamous intraepithelial lesion so this is just a pre malignant lesion if it, the patient is taking care at this stage it won't turn into malignancy next we can see hsil which is high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion this is a pre malignant lesion and can very well turn into malignancy therefore a biopsy is recommended at this stage and the last is of a squamous cell carcinoma that means that this is a malignant lesion and the patient needs to be treated for cancer how the report will help the patient and the clinician in taking decision so uh, specific categories are framed for this report and on the basis of this categories the management is recommended like if we give that the smear is not satisfactory for evaluation it basically means that the smear did not contain enough cells to make a decision and you need to retake the smear if the category is inflammatory smear it basically means there is a lot of inflammation and the changes that are seen on the smear might be due to inflammation and not due to malignancy therefore it's always recommended to retake the smear if the diagnostic category is low grade squamous intraepithelial lesion it means that it is 
some sort of a pre malignant lesion it's always better to repeat the smear after 6 months so that the malignancy is not missed HGSIL or high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion means that this is a pre malignant lesion just to confirm whether it is invasive or not better take a biopsy squamous cell carcinoma is outright malignancy and patient needs to be treated for the same EGCUS is basically glandular uh, malignancy or adenocarcinoma again the management recommendation is biopsy or curettage and this is the diagnostic category we give most commonly which is nilm it is negative for intraepithelial lesion or malignancy it is a normal smear normal screening recommendations which are there for the normal population should be followed next question comes who should get screen so it is recommended that all females in sexually active age group because this is the disease which happens in sexually active age group so all females in sexually active age group should get screen every 3 years so this is the broad recommendation next i'll explain the difference between conventional and uh, liquid pap as such it does not make much of a difference to the patient only for the pathologist the view of the cells is much clearer in liquid pap than in the conventional smear because all the background uh, inflammation is lost in the liquid pap smear also the advantage with liquid pap is that we can use the cells for culturing or we can say we can use the cell for growing of the virus hpv 16 and 18 can be screened in liquid pap but it cannot be screened in the conventional smear so this screening for hpv virus is now embedded in the screening protocols uh, whenever a pap smear is done at least in western countries the hpv screen is also followed out of the various uh, viruses or specific types of hpv viruses which can cause cancer 16 and 18 are the most important ones so to conclude uh, the cervical cancer screening is a very important technique to prevent cancer uh, in indian hospital still date i have found that uh, the cervical or the pap smear test is done in order to rule out uh, cancer in patient who suspected of having it it would be always better to use it as a screening technique Thank you for listening. I'm Dr. Ashish Jawarkar, Assistant Professor at Parul Institute of Medical Sciences and Research in the Department of Pathology. Thank you.